A simple machine is a mechanical device that has only one or no moving parts. It requires only manual force from people or animals to perform work. There are six simple machines. This activity introduces the first, the lever. A lever consists of a straight bar that rests and pivots around a support. Applying force to one part of the lever produces a useful action at another part of the lever. Most levers help reduce the amount of force needed to lift an object or pry something loose. There are three types of levers, first, second, and third class. One type is not better than another. Each simply has the fulcrum in the different location. This activity will deal with first class levers in which the fulcrum is located between the effort and the load. The focus of this inquiry is, how can you use a lever to reduce the amount of force needed to lift a load? In activity three, students are introduced to the first of six types of simple machines, the lever. This activity will take approximately 40 minutes. The vocabulary introduced in this activity is arm, effort, fulcrum, lever, load, pivot, simple machine, and trade-off. From the kit for each team of two, you will need a push-pull meter, a stack of 12 metal washers, the fulcrum, a paint stirrer, and masking tape. In addition, you will need to supply a dual-scale ruler, pencil, and duplicate activity three parts A and B. For the advanced preparation of this activity, you're going to need to stack and tape washers, mark the lever, and replace any push-pull meter rubber bands that might have become stretched. Kathy, why don't you help me as we prepare these materials? And we'll start by taping the washers. We'll get 12 metal washers out, and the, I'm going to be in, including some of the ideas that I think might make it a little bit easier for our teachers. First of all, you're gonna put the tape over the, the metal stack of metal washers and wrap it securely. So it's okay if it overlaps? And yes, it is, top. right, right. Okay, now let's put another one adjacent to this one. Okay. Let's put one more piece on just to make sure. We're gonna be using these a lot in the next investigation, so we want them to be nice and sturdy. Yes. Uh, these, this is only a one-time preparation because uh, they are gonna be used again and again in this um, module, and so we don't have to do this again. Now, it does say in the uh, teacher guide that you might wanna have the students do this, but it may be a little bit time-consuming for them, and you know time is really important in the classroom. I think it's a good idea to get as much done as possible. Yes, ahead of time. Right, so what we're gonna do is take a pencil and we're going to pierce the inside of the washers because they're gonna be putting string through these, the center of these washers at a later time. So just simply pierce it and take your nail or a larger um, pencil and push the center out like this. So the tape goes down in there. The and tape goes down there. It, it makes won't it kind catch of on any of the string later on right. in other activities. You're exactly right. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. Nice and straight. Right. Now let's talk about how we're going to be set using the paint stirrer, and it has. To, we're going to have to put some marks on the paint stirrer. Uh, first of all, it tells us the students to make an X in the center, and that's going to be an important variable that they're going to need to want to control. So why don't we do this ahead of time? This paint stirrer is really exactly 30 centimeters long. So let's make a little mark at the 15. Okay. Okay. Let's move it back and make another mark at the 15 line. Okay. Okay. All right. This again will 
not need to be uh, done uh, anymore because once they're set up, they'll be set up for all for future activities. Now, because they're going to be placing the fulcrum at different places, what we're going to do is to make an equal line on the paint stirrer, equal distance from the center. I like the way you're using your ruler like that. It makes for easy measuring. You mm -hmm. don't have to worry. And this is a variable that we're definitely going to control. Okay. And we'll just make an X right here in the middle. Okay. And we're done. First, review the definition of a machine, which is a mechanical device that helps us do work. Write the word simple machine on the board. Explain that it is a device with one or no moving parts and requires manual force from people or animals to perform work. The lever, the one introduced in this activity, is one of six simple machines. Write lever on the board and ask students to share where and how the term has been used. The teacher may draw a lever on the chalkboard and refer to the, it on the activity sheet. Together, label the four parts of every lever, arm, fulcrum, load, and effort. Question, what happens when a person pushes down on the effort of the lever. The arm pivots up. This type of lever is a first class lever. The fulcrum is located between the effort and the load. The effort and load move in opposite directions. Students gather materials, including the wooden paint stirrer and the fulcrum. If you've not already done so, direct the students to mark an X in the middle of the lever. Equal distance, again, from the X. After placing the paint stick on the fulcrum, they'll use their thumbs, and Kathy, help me. Tell me what you feel as you press. Oh. Put, I can feel you definitely pushing down. Mm -hmm. You can feel a force? Definitely. I'm what do you think kids will be thinking about when they're playing around with this? Well, you know, it, I, it kind of reminds me of a seesaw. <laughs> I think it does. Okay. If you have not already taped the 12 washers together, ask the students to do it now, and each team of two students will get a set of washers, the arm, and the fulcrum. Okay. Then you're going to direct them to place the washers on the end of the arm. Kathy pushed down with the effort against the, uh-oh. Uh-oh, what well, happened there? Well, you know, this does happen, and uh, one of the things we might do to is to increase the amount of friction on this paint stirrer, and maybe the, the washers will sit a little bit more secure. Okay, let's, let's start again. again. And what we're going to do is put the uh, fulcrum right at the X. What do you observe as you press down? Well, it does feel kind of heavy to lift it. Mm -hmm. I kind of even see the stick moving a little bit as I'm pushing up and down. Okay. I wonder what we could do to reduce or increase the amount of effort uh, it takes to push. Uh, for or the amount of force needed to lift the washers. So what let's do is let's investigate by changing the fulcrum. Let's move the fulcrum closer to the effort. Now, I'll hold it and you press. Oh, that feels much heavier to push it like that. Okay. Wonder what would happen if we change that variable and move the fulcrum closer to the load. Okay. Ah, that's much easier. Much easier. Much easier. So the students might be interested in finding out how much effort is used to lift the washers at these three different fulcrum points. What device could we use to measure the amount of force used to lift the load? And the students would probably suggest... Well, earlier on, we were using the push-pull meters to measure the force of our soda cans. So we might use the push-pull meters to see how much effort it takes or how much force it takes to lift the load. Okay, and I think that's probably a good idea.
At this point, you're going to ask the students to move the fulcrum close to the edge of the table. And then, using the push-pull meter, they're going to press down and measure the amount of force it takes to lift the load. And what we can see right here is that it takes three units of force. Okay, the next step. Okay, let me write that down. All right. Three units, and I'm gonna put units of force. Okay, next you're going to ask the students to move the fulcrum closer to the effort, but farther from the load at that mark. So what do you think is going to happen, Johanna? I don't know. Do you remember whether it was heavier or... Oh, oh my goodness. There was more force. We've gone up to six units of force this time. Okay. So when the um, load is farther from the fulcrum, it requires more force. Okay. All right. Now it says we're going to move it closer to the load. We're going to move it. Move the fulcrum closer to the load. Ready? Hmm. That's only about two and a half units of force. Kathy, let's try something though. Okay. What if we moved the uh, push pull meter maybe in a little bit closer to the indentation? Oh, you mean in case. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Kids aren't moving, it, measuring in the, from the same place. Well, that not really makes a difference. Okay. Does it make a difference? Okay. Um, we said two and a half. I really don't see that it does make a difference. So uh, I think that would be okay if they do that. Kathy, what conclusions should the students draw by doing this investigation? Well, I notice on my sheet that I recorded that it took fewer units when the fulcrum was closer to the load and more units of force when the fulcrum was further from the load. Okay, hopefully they'll get that conclusion. Students move the lever and materials back to the center of the table. The push-pull meter is no longer used at this part. Students will repeat the investigation of moving the fulcrum at the three different positions. This time, using a ruler, they're going to measure the distance, the load, and the effort are moved. Kathy, help, help me do this. Okay, let's do okay. that. Okay, we've got the fulcrum in the middle on the X, and... And so I'm going to move the effort, and I'm going to measure from the same point in the stick. I, I, it doesn't matter, matter whether I measure from the top or the bottom. It looks at, like, uh, on this end, it's six centimeters, so I'm going to move it down. Okay. So the effort had to move six centimeters. All right, let's see. I'm going to record Go ahead that. and record that. And let's see how much distance the load is going to be lifted. And can you see that? Yes, it says six centimeters. Okay, okay. with it the same, right in the middle. Now I wonder what happens when we're going to move the fulcrum closer to the effort this way. Okay. okay. All right, um, it says five centimeters this time. Hmm. It'll, yes, we want the students to actually move that. It does move five centimeters. Okay. <clears throat> oh, what does that say? Seven. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. So it moves seven centimeters and five centimeters from the effort. Okay, this time we're going to move the fulcrum closer to the load. Well, I can see a difference already. Okay. It says it moves eight centimeters. Okay. I wonder if we could predict what this will be. Okay, let's Doesn't try it. Doesn't look like it's going to move very far. You see it? Uh, five centimeters. How about that? So, Kathy, what did you observe as we moved the load closer to the uh, fulcrum? What about the distance? Well, uh, it, it was definitely a lot easier to do this, but... The, it had to move a, far, a greater distance. Okay, so less effort, greater distance. Now, what did you conclude when we moved the fulcrum closer to the effort? Well, the distance didn't have to go as far, but it was a lot harder to lift. So greater effort, shorter distance. Question seven on activity sheet three, part B reads, you know that the closer the fulcrum is to the load, the easier it is to lift the load. But there is a trade-off. Look at the table. What is the trade-off? 
students discover that when the fulcrum is closer to the load and the load is easier to lift, the effort must travel a greater distance. The trade-off is force for distance. Now for cleanup, collect the push-pull meters, paint stirs, fulcrums, and stack of washers and return those to the kit. Students can leave the washer stacked and taped. Now it's time to read Delta Science Reader page six titled, Levers.